Hey, 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 hey. In light of that spontaneity and decision-making skill set, I'm kind of freestyle talking today, which is what I do in my profession. In hip hop, I reach out to y'all and it's this interactive experience. So when I say, how are, you, how are we doing this morning? Yeah, we're doing good so far. We also do something called call and response. When I say word, y'all say up. Word, up, word, up. Nice, how about inspire? I messed you guys up. <laughs> when I say in, you say spire, in. Fire. In. Fire. Yes. So I'm feeling rather charged and inspired so far this morning and going to speak a bit about how we get that charge from our outer world and our inner world and how we synthesize it into the way we walk in this world, how we interact with it. I come from a long lineage of storytellers and writers. I think we all kind of come from storytellers. But I'd say I'm the first generation cyborg. I'm the first one of my family where I could write oceans of stories without ever touching a pen and paper. Now for a while I kind of dejected this part of my reality. I, I had a, a lot of opinions on my peers and my generation and how absorbed we are getting in technology. And I remember one day my brother called me up and was like, you want to go for a hike? You know, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm writing just to write, restore my innocence. I'm not fighting just to fight, I am igniting significance. They say I've got the game locked, database with its fingerprints. I cracked my own cage and I've been learning the meaning since of burning the freedom incense in every instance. And I insist you take a moment to listen and list all the things you care about. Think of all the dreams that don't deserve your doubt. Take a stance, make one. Make a plan, shake one. Shake something up, yo. Cause you are bright like the sun. Come and we together cumulatively, it is all number one. So dance like everyone around you is blind and find that that might just be the case. Billions of blind mice chasing this cheese in a rigged rat race. It's a rigged rat race. And quite possibly the modesty of common day philosophy and geometry is that we aren't yet prepared to be know-it-alls. We are busy running around being bullies and showing off because human creatures man were fascinating but we kind of been steady avoiding and procrastinating always wanting more and giving less consumed with consumption always relying on our personal assumptions but I took a moment to stop assuming listen I heard I heard Pachamama I heard Mother Earth when I was listening I heard her ask me what I stand for and so I responded. I said, passion perfected, indifference rejected, a natural infection and counter projection of all we have seen. We live in this dream and though at times it's serene, right now we can agree, the alarm clock is ringing. So let us wake up and accept our places as these abstract shapes in a world of attempted symmetry. The geometry is not illusory. Let's maintain our blind grips loosely with one finger touching at all times. Stay connected to each other. Wake up these voices that in the past have been as silent as mimes. Let's riddle this the ultimate equation, resulting in solution, answer to famine, greed, pollution. Stop saying, oh no, we can't figure it out. Like it's inherent in the human. So I can't go on a I can't go on a hike today, man. I'm uh, I'm a little I'm a little busy. I just steady had my head in, in my journal and you know kept it a really private experience. All this social commentary I would do, I would make judgments and just write poems about it. But I wasn't sharing. And my brother was like, "Yo, dude, you know I've known you I've known you quite long, and uh, and." I think you should share. I had a few people really starting to push me in that way and I was like, well, yeah, am I really speaking and living my truth, talking about being empowered if I'm not stepping into the work of empowering others or empowering myself through that synthesis which I believe occurs in self-expression. And so I was like, okay, like maybe I'll post, maybe I'll post this video. So I did it in the form of video which created a whole new reality for me, a whole online virtual community. People started giving me feedback or asking me questions or sharing their work. And I was like, gee, it's like having a hundred pen, more pen pals than my parents could ever have or my grandparents. We, we have this ability to connect in a way that we never did before. And so I posted another socially commentary, com commentary? commentative piece um, about time inspired by Steve Miller Band, I was like, time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. 
Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. They say that time keeps on slipping on into the future and the wound of age can't be healed with a single silver suture. Well, if time keeps on slipping, there must be something that I'm missing, a piece that's not fitting. Cause who's loosening their grip to the point where it can slip, drop and then drip through the drapes of time. And despite metaphysics, there may be no button called rewind. So the refuge for our thoughts is deep within our mind, packed and stacked up. There are racks of black stuff and fat we don't trust and courage we can't muster up enough to let go and trust that every little thing is a piece of your path and only the pain that you don't acknowledge is the kind that's gonna last and without confrontation our soul fades fast and once again find ourselves trapped inside our past like time keeps on slipping 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 into the future. So I stay up with the moon and I sleep with the sun, hiding intently from thoughts and making a decision. Let us turn this all inward, see what we can find, because all my social commentary is wondering what's behind, behind the curtain, behind the mask, because the issue lately is personal inventory comes last. I won't make plans for the future, and then I complain about the past and engage in agreements like, yeah, oh my God, this year went so fast. <laughs> Screw that. Time is an illusion, a bruised and sore contusion on the skull of society we must have fallen and bumped our heads forgotten to take all of our meds been given too much of a shit about what he or she says and here I go again giving my opinions on our culture picking up our scraps like a confused and tired vulture I need to take a step back see life in the quarantine of breath living synonymously with suffering and death because those things are undeniable parts of life's mysterious rhythm but they only hold as much pain as we give them Time keeps on slipping, slipping. So I posted that on the interwebs, and um, and it and it was so neat to get a whole a whole gradient of perspective and feedback, and and keep pushing myself. You know that one was still a lot of opinion, and and I realized it was easy to keep myself removed and observe and not dig into my heart deeply and write from that space. Ironically, it's a lot more difficult to tell my own story versus the story of humanity that I see. Um, it was a lot more vulnerable. And so I kind of, I pushed myself and the tipping point with that was uh, a dear friend who died this summer after many friends in the past several years have died from heavy drug use in my, in my peer group. And I had been working on a piece for a while, um, three or four years that I was certain I was never going to share. Um, and then my childhood friend died and I was like, shoot. I need to share this. This, uh, this is you know, going to be part of my heart healing, I'm certain, and perhaps valuable for others, and maybe not. And so this is just the little first verse of it. It was, um, lay it down, lay it down, girl, lay it down now. She always had the brightest light in her damn eye. Like she stole a couple stars out the night sky. When did that light die? Was it the same time? The priority number one became getting high and shit, I can't lie. I took the same ride, but you got further down the road because you hitchhiked. Ignored a few friends, ignored a few signs, couldn't read the post on your path that read dead end. I saw your feet grow heavy on the pavement. Cold sweats got you wonder where the day went, whether the money you've been scraping for was well spent. Like. Hell no, so how many bills been up that pretty nose? I could take a guess, but no way will ever know anything that you would do just to try and cop some blues like powder press pills, got you pawning all your shoes straight, snatching piggy banks out your little brother's room. So lay it down, go well, lay it down, put your head on the floor. And so it went on and on and got into some more deep parts of the soul in that song and deep parts of the pain. And I posted it, and within a week, um, it, it had half a million views and thousands of comments, and I was getting messages, and I noticed people speaking to each other in the comment thread. I noticed people supporting each other, um, sharing their stories, and profoundly impacting my experience of what it is to share from my heart in a vulnerable way. I noticed this exponential relationship of the more real it is, the more, or maybe real is not the word, um, but it, but it does come from this, when, when there's fear with something, that's usually an in, a good indication that it's worth stepping into the fire of. And so that was the, so that was the relationship I saw. If, if I was to make a graph, 
It was, if you feel, the more fear you feel in sharing, the more important it is to do so. And the more impact it has on, a, on the human data bank, I, I like to say, on our cumulative cultural collective and this expression that allows us to do cumulative cultural healing. And so I, I continued, and I have been continuing, and I'm kind of just doing a grand experiment in it all. I'm certainly a student of life and of this new semi-cyborgian reality, um, but embracing the reality we're in, and I'm in, versus having strong negative feelings about it and being radically curious about what this tool is and the responsibility of this tool. I am wearing all my superheroes who would say, with great power comes great responsibility. So that curiosity piece, I say we've been taught away from it. They say curiosity killed the cat. I think that's what we're conditioned to believe. I say imagine anything you want because this world is only as small as you perceive. And this time around, okay, maybe I can't be anybody but me, but trust me when it's just me, myself, and this brain around here, and we're both walking around on the same two feet, digging on the same beats. I hear the pound, feel the sound, I'm all about the rhythm. Got two lungs with some fresh breath in them. Dreams, I pin them up on my ceiling with my mind just reeling. I slowly go peeling, feeling back all the layers of my ego. Then it's just my in and my out breath. And you know that we go back into creation of reality, back to a time when my soul wasn't really me, because who is me anyways? And many days I find in some ways this is just one phase of this particular dimension. This pretty cool game is just a cycle of ascension, at least for ones who recognize that it's pretending. If you take yourself too serious, get stuck in a rut with those thoughts all delirious, go on, take a breather. Let it in and let it out because I'm starting quick to learn it's about the journey of the route, not about the end. Truth is, that don't exist. It's about one round of life and then another, maybe, so we can check stuff off our list. So ask questions until your tongue is raw, but don't be attached to receiving an answer, because curiosity didn't kill the cat. It turned him into a panther. <laughs> Thank you guys so much.